Hey everyone, I'm Amanda Sabrinsky and I've been asked this year to record a video for Plex Pro Week and share a little bit about what I do here. I'm a member of our product design team and I serve as a user experience or UX strategy and research lead and manager. A little background on me first. Our family began using Plex in 2012. My husband runs our personal media server and it's become a pretty important part of our daily lives. Not only do my husband and I use it daily, but so does our daughter and most of our extended family now. As a UX strategist, I care about the way our product looks, but I'm deeply interested in what our users do with our product and how they view it. So what exactly does a user experience strategist do? Well, backing up a little bit, UX design means that we have a deep focus or deep understanding of our users, what they need, what they value, their abilities, and also their limitations. On the product design team, we use something called the design thinking process or double diamond structure to better understand our users. As you'll see here, there are two diamonds. The first diamond focuses on strategy. This is where we're doing our research and we're defining our problem. The second diamond is all about execution. This is where we're exploring different designs and then executing on them in development. As a strategist, I'm really focused on this first diamond. In discovery, this is where I'm talking with users, conducting surveys, and digging into the data. When I'm defining, that means I'm synthesizing. I'm looking at trends in the data and coming up with actionable next steps for our designers and our engineers. Now I'd like to dive into a case study and show you how this process works in practice. Our work on each team really does vary. It depends on whether we're creating a new feature or we're finding an existing one. The case study we'll review today and walk through is focused on refinement and improvements to an existing experience. Recently, we sought to streamline and improve the Plex web experience. We wanted to learn about the current implementation, what worked well, what didn't, from the navigation to the homepage to the web app. To do this, we first sought to understand the underlying needs and frustrations of our Plex users, both new and old. Our work began by the team documenting some high-level goals and learning objectives. What did we want to come out of user testing with? We knew we wanted to determine the ease of use and strengths of, of the website. We wanted to collect areas of improvement and refinement. We wanted to identify problems we had no ideas about that were new to us. And once we had these high level goals documented, we planned our test. We conducted unmoderated tests. This meant the sessions were completed alone by the participant. We allowed each participant to explore the website from the home page to some supporting pages through to the web app, really at their leisure. Each participant was then asked some clear questions. What did they think of the website? What did they think of Plex's services? What did they think about the path it took to find something to watch? We wanted to know how difficult this was and how cumbersome it could be for them. Once all of this data was collected, we used a method of organization called Rosebud Thorn. Here's an example of how we organize this data. Rosebud Thorn is used when identifying or flagging feedback as positive, negative, or having potential. Our roses are our red cards. These are our highlights, our successes, our small wins, or something positive that happened. Our thorns are our blue cards. This is a challenge in the experience or a challenge a user experience, something that could use more support. Our buds are our green cards. These are our new ideas that have blossomed. The benefits of RBTs or rosebud thorns is that it's a process that helps us to create a system or a set of rules around organizing data. We then organize them into themed groups. This exercise is called affinity clustering. The goal of this activity is to identify all the issues related to a common problem and then group them into topical clusters. These clusters are meant to help guide us in where we will focus our work and improvement initiatives. The topical clusters are a helpful way to see which themes or areas of the experience have the greatest need for improvement. You'll see a lot of thorns or buds in this area. You'll also see what parts of the experience are doing really well at a high level. These are the areas where you see a lot of red post-its, the roses. Now let's dive into some of the major themes and findings from this study. Our first was our navigation. When asked to find content or a piece of entertainment on our website, several users struggled to find what they wanted to know quickly. These users noted the frustration with the number of clicks it took for them to find this content or get to our app. Another piece of feedback around our navigation was the lack of search. They wanted the ability to search. Our second big finding was around categories. Several users noted wanting to see the type of content available to them through the listing of genres and categories. It became clear to us that we needed to elevate this and promote it on our website and our app. And our last big finding was around our homepage. Several users provided insight that the site felt static. They wanted the entertainment and the content available to them faster and promoted on the homepage. They wanted the homepage to feel dynamic and lively. Once we had wrapped our discovery and definition phases, we moved right into design. 
As a UX strategist, I stay on throughout the completion of this work. I continue to collaborate with our designers, making sure I'm always articulating the needs and expectations of our users. This means always referring back to that thoughtful feedback we captured, and I do this a lot through quotes. Quotes are great. Once the updated designs were implemented, a second round of user testing was going to happen. This test meant to validate that the new navigation, the new homepage, the new website structure really met the user's expectation and we were getting them to the content they cared about. We also wanted to continue to identify friction points in the experience. What were we gonna work on next? Another unmoderated test was performed to confirm these improvements and these friction points had been removed. Now let's review the changes in second round feedback. In comparison to round one, participants experienced less friction when asked to find a movie or show on the website. The navigation structure also helped to create a distinction between our free content and catalog and free features and pro features like PlexPass. The language was clearer and learnable. Users found the updated navigation, which included search and a watch-free dropdown with genre categories, easy to use and intuitive. Users were quickly able to find the sections they were seeking. Providing multiple paths and flows to finding a movie or a piece of content meant that users were not limited to one way of content discovery. This was key in reducing the user's frustration from the first round. And featuring content probably on our homepage meant that users had a clear expectation of what we had available, and it made the site feel lively and more engaging. So that's a quick behind the scenes look at a typical project here at Plex and how we work. What's great is that our job is never done and design is iterative. We're continually evaluating and reevaluating our work, looking to make improvements and enhancements. This means ideas should be developed, tested, and refined several times. As always, we love to hear your feedback, so keep it coming. I'll definitely be reading it.